media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. Welcome back to the show, Sean. Thanks for having me on. Sean, going into the new year, are we going to see more of the same of what we saw in 2021? Well, you know what Yogi Berra used to say about, you know, forecasting the future? He said that it's tough to make predictions, especially about the future. And um, I tend to hear to that. I hate making predictions, but I will tell you this. Uh, I expect that the market will zigzag higher um, just for a whole bunch of things that are lining up. Um, because the um, let's start with the fact that the U.S. seems to be in the mid-cycle phase of the business cycle. And so if history is a guide, you know, the mid-cycle is an expansionary period. And in fact, Goldman Sachs expects GDP growth of 3.8% next year. That's down from their previous forecast, but that's still very respectable growth. Um, speaking of that, um, earnings are growing. Uh, earnings forecast um, are going forward, I think, is the highest ever. Uh, stocks are still expensive compared to earnings, but if Earnings keep growing, you know, that's kind of bullish. Uh, we know the Fed's going to, or has been telegraphing that it's going to do three quarter point rate hikes next year, but that's not even a full point. So, um, I think the market has to adjust to not having the high speed chicken feed of all that Fed money being pumped in, but the adjustments being made right now. So I don't expect that'll be too much of a drag. We have, a, we had a nice big infrastructure spending bill was passed here in the U.S. And other countries around the world are doing the same, including China. And um, China, I mean, uh, they just put $31 billion into their financial system. Uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, they have other things going on. Even though analysts are saying things like steel demand will slow, China just announced new infrastructure projects, just announced that it was going to loosen financial conditions. You put those things together, you know, it, the 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 uh, industrial m- metals demand in China actually looks quite good for 2022, despite what the analysts are saying. So I'm probably more bullish than most people. That doesn't mean things can't go down, but I think when they go down, you know, it's probably a buying opportunity. And China, although they didn't bail out Evergrande, it seems like they're doing everything around the periphery to kind of soften the blow. <laughs> yeah, everything else but Evergrande. I think they want those guys an example to strike the fear of God into real estate speculators. But they don't want the system to collapse, despite what you hear from these idiots on the Internet who, like, forecast, oh, my God, China's on the brink of collapse. No, it isn't. It's a very much manipulated system. And uh, they're going to let things fall apart. They, it's really a command and control economy. And right now they're pumping in money to make sure that the bad things don't happen. And so if you're looking at the commodity space, that's actually quite bullish. But I can be bullish on all sorts of commodities, oil, for example, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't think China is the big worry people have right now. I know people have also been worried about uh what happens with COVID, you know, not just Omicron, which is turning out to be much more contagious but much less serious, but also what comes next. But with each new wave, with each new variant, the world is more resilient. The world adjusts to this. Um, so yeah, maybe not as many people will return to the offices, which is fine by me. But, you know, I mean, uh, I think the world will adjust to the problems that it's facing. And things will continue to roll along. Now, the economy and the stock market are two different things. I think we learned that back during the early days of the 
of the pandemic where, you know, the economy pretty much stopped, the market crashed, but then the market just picked itself up and bolted higher. So that's why we, we have the S&P 500 up 27% in 2020. So, you know, I, excuse me, in 2021, ah, losing track of my years. But, um, so, so, um, so, uh, I don't see the doom and gloom coming that many people are expecting. And I think that if people just stepped back and looked at what's going on, look at Christmas, for example. Christmas sales were off the charts. It was something like a 17 year high. And all those supply problems we were all worried about that we've been told to worry about, well, guess what? They worked their ways around it. They found ways to keep the shelves stopped, which is part of the beauty of, of, like, capitalism, if you ask me. Anyway, the whole point is I don't see things nearly as gloomy as many other analysts do. And uh, all the people who are worried, oh, my God, Christmas trees are 200 bucks. Well, guess what? <laughs> don't spend the 200 bucks on a Christmas tree. Get extra presents for the kids. They won't care. Yeah. Yeah, they don't care. People, I, I, I mean, it really helped in the U.S. that we had the uh, child tax credit checks. And that lifted, what, something like 4 million kids out of poverty? It was, like, amazing. Now, they might stop because all of the, all of the Republicans and Joe Manchin are against them for the time being. However, they're currently negotiating with Joe Manchin, um, who's the Democratic senator from West Virginia, or I should say one of them. And so if they can work something out with him, then the child tax credit checks, that's a mouthful. But anyway, those will continue next year, and that's really been helping the lower class uh, folks, working class folks, more than anything. So we definitely need those to continue. We'll have more with Sean Broderick right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Sean Broderick. Sean, there's been a serious underinvestment in oil and gas exploration. Is this ultimately going to lead to much higher prices at both in the oil field and at the gasoline pump? Yeah, well, they had le- the least amount of oil discovered since 1946. <laughs> and could it have anything to do with the fact that one government after another is coming out and saying, well, the way forward is electric vehicles? <laughs> Of course it's going to stop people from looking for oil and gas. Um, I think that's probably shorter term because, you know, I mean, as much as we'd all like to have an EV in the garage tomorrow, this, this is a very, very long process. And um, this is one of the reasons that I'm so bullish on energy for, for 2021, as a matter of fact, is um, I expect oil and gas to have a great year. Again, we'll probably have another COVID scare. So if you don't own any, any right now, you don't have to chase it. Wait for the next COVID scare. Let's say it's in March, April, who knows? We'll have another one. And I'm not forecasting one for March, April. I'm just saying that the odds of some kind of problem with COVID between now and then is pretty good. When that happens, oil prices will go down. All the chickens on Wall Street start running around screaming, the sky is falling. That's when you buy. Because we just had an opportunity in December. Because the exact same thing happened. Uh, Part of it is because so much trading is run by bots now. You know, they react to headlines. They don't have souls. They don't have the uh, guts of a human being to say, well, you know, this, this, we, we've seen this before. Bots don't think that way. They react to a headline, they sell. Boom. They, then another head, headline comes along, they buy. That aggravates and, um, and accelerates the market in both directions. And so we aren't really trading stock valuations anymore. What we're trading is people's psychology, what people think about the markets and what the bots think about the markets. And the bots are just programs. They're damn stupid. So, you know, I mean, um, you can throw your hands up. You can despair and say, I don't know what a valuation is anymore. Believe me, I do that at least once a week. But, in the grander scheme of things, this is actually not a bad time to be trading. We can see these big trends starting to 
play out. We know that the bots and the big fat cats on like Wall Street will react badly the next time COVID news comes out. That will be another buying opportunity. And so just have some money squared away, I mean tucked away, for when that happens. You'll do fine. It's, isn't that the way Warren Buffett got uh, ultra rich? He just he never bought at the top of a market, always went to cash, and then just waited for the bottom to fall out somewhere and swooped in. Yeah, well, being a super rich dude, he has a luxury of never selling. Yeah. I don't have that luxury. I have to take profits, especially when my investments start to top out after a good run. You know, I get 40%, 50%. Yeah, I'm going to take a gain, <laughs> even if it's only half a gain, which I try to do. But, I mean, uh, you know, because that really just gives you a cushion. And, uh, in fact, during the December pullback, one thing I was doing is as hard as it is, I had some losing positions that I still believed in, and I added to them. And that's very, very difficult to do for anybody, you know. You can look at something and say, that's down 20%. Well, you know what? If you add the same amount of money that you bought the first time, it's going to be down less than 10%. So, Sometimes when you really believe in something, you have to do that. And I think Warren Buffett probably did that part too. What he does that I don't do is he holds forever. I mean, I wish I had that luxury, but that's but that's one one luxury most people don't have. Other sectors that perhaps you're not in, but people dabble in. I'm thinking of uh, cryptocurrencies. There's two very distinct camps, those who think it's a Ponzi scheme and others say it's the wave of the future. Uh, where do you sit on this? Well, there's now like 20,000 cryptocurrencies, aren't there? So I don't think you can judge them as one group. Probably, uh, you know, the big ones will probably be okay. They'll probably be extremely volatile. I wouldn't want to put my life savings in it. Some people do. You know, I mean, uh, that's okay. For me, I like more tangible things. Even if it's somewhat on the cutting edge, look at lithium. I mean, the demand for that is just enormous. We just saw the price of lithium, right? We just saw the price of lithium jump by 8.7% in one week. One week. That's nuts. But look at a one-year chart of lithium, which I just sent to my subscribers um, in uh, in uh, a couple of my services. And lithium carbonate prices in China rose 426% in the past year. Now, do I expect them to rise 426% next year? I do not. But the reason they're rising like that is there is a king-size supply-demand squeeze coming, and everybody can see it. And right now, those companies that make batteries are trying to lock in supply like nobody's business because it would take a heck of a big monkey wrench to derail this trend. This is a massive just locomotive of, like, demand coming that everyone can see. So it's easier for me to forecast what's going on in lithium than it is to forecast what's going on in crypto. I see people trot it out as, as crypto experts. They look like they just shaved last week for the first time. I don't know how they're any more smart about that than I am, except, of course, that they bought it when it was cheap, maybe, if they're telling the truth. And, you know, they probably did. Good for them. I I bought a lot of things that worked out. I bought a lot of things that failed, and I learned from the failures. I mean, uh, I would not invest my money with someone who's never lost money. <laughs> That's for sure. You have to learn true pain in the market. You know, I mean, pain is the best teacher. And But on the other hand, you can look at something like lithium and say, geez, that is a great supply-demand situation that isn't going to change in the short term, at least in the next year. I mean, um, prices are probably going to go higher. How much higher? I have no idea. But that's a nice cushion under all those stocks, though. Even though they may pull back from time to time, you know the, the big trend, unless the executives screw up majorly, the big trend for those stocks is going to be up. So, you know, I mean, uh, that's why I tend to shy away from <laughs> I shy away from crypto. We have we have smart guys at Weiss Ratings who do a lot of stuff with crypto. I'm not one of them, um, uh, but I'm happy investing in like what I'm investing in. We've had some great gains in the past year. I expect we'll, we should be able to do okay in 
2022 as well. Sean, thank you so much for chatting with us. Thanks for having me on. It's always a pleasure. And let me wish you and your listeners all the best for the new year. My guest has been Sean Broderick, Senior Editor at WeissRatings.com. If you have any questions for Sean or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com and we'll ask that question for you. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.